Scientific knowledge has revealed to us the importance of each species within the ecosystem. Conservationist trends have taught us the need to raise public awareness to make everyone understand the importance of all ecosystems and their species. But the reality, the pragmatic vision of the world, makes it clear that we will only manage to conserve that which, in one way or another, brings benefits for the local inhabitants. Conservationism is a concept that was born in the developed countries, where the basic needs of the population do not directly depend on their natural surroundings. These countries have, in general, lost the majority of their natural heritages, and look to those of developing countries with logical concern. But with what moral authority can we prohibit something which our society has had to do in order to reach its current stage of development? How can we prevent areas from being cut down, hunted, burnt or drained if what is at stake is food for their families? How can we explain to them the natural treasure they own if they are worried about their very survival? How can we make them respect threatened animals if they are a danger to the lives of their children or the cattle on which they depend? Here on the plains of Venezuela, we find a revealing example. The region of Los Llanos is divided into atos, large cattle ranches where zebras and horses are free to roam, looked after by a few cattle herders. The lands remain in their original state because they have traditionally been used for extensive cattle rearing. For years this has been the only way to exploit these lands, and so their owners have left them just as they were, making them the final refuge of many Amazon species in danger of extinction. But these plains are not rich territory for cattle rearing and the animals suffer great limitations and diseases which make them less and less profitable. The situation could bring changes which would lead to ranches being used for other more lucrative activities. But year after year, the intact nature of this austere land is progressively becoming its main source of income. International conservationist organizations finance research projects on the ranches for the study and protection of threatened species, injecting foreign currency into an economically depressed area. There are now biological stations on the cattle ranches, stations that bring money which is compatible with cattle rearing. And some species have immediately benefited from this. The Orinoco crocodile was, until recently, a mortal enemy for the inhabitants of this region. The reptiles killed their cattle and were a potential danger to people, given their size and aggressiveness, and so they were hunted down almost to the point of extinction. Today, on ranches like El Frio, the Orinoco crocodiles are being studied and protected, and programs of breeding in captivity and repopulation have been carried out in areas devastated by the cattle herders. This study area where scientists and conservationists from all over the world develop their programs on the ground 
receives a considerable injection of finance for the most threatened species, turning them into a profitable asset. The owners win, the conservationists win, science and knowledge win, and the crocodile, of course, wins. It is not surprising, therefore, that the population of Orinoco crocodiles have started a slow but promising recovery on the ranches of the plains of Venezuela. Thank <laughs> you.